Now we are coming to uh, our conference of today, our speaker. So we, we are with Joe Aguirre from New York. Hello, Joe. Hi. Uh, Joe uh, lives and makes photographs in New York City. So I read a little bit, uh, small presentation here. Uh, he focuses on personal and lyrical narrative bodies of work. He allows the streets, subways, and everything else in between to inform how he sees and communicates with the world. Joe is a member of international photography collective Burn My Eye, and he also owns a gallery and a publishing imprint, Sad Songs New York. Both are run out uh, from his apartment in Brooklyn. That's the apartment where you are right now. Yeah. Okay. So actually, we are uh, your, 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 your host. No, you are our host. We are invited to your apartment, Joe. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> well, for the moment, there is yeah, quite uh, 35 people. Maybe you have space for everybody. It's OK. Yeah. Good. So yeah, Joe, we can um, more than that. now it's, uh, I give, <coughs> I pass the word to you. OK. Uh, I'm eager to, to, to hear your presentation, not to me only, but also all the present as well. And then after more or less, 40, 45 minutes, uh, we will get back for the questions. So people don't um, hesitate, put your questions during the presentation in the chatting box. We will take note of them and then we will uh, uh, make a little conversation with Joe um, about uh, your, your questions, your remarks, okay? So Joe, up to you. Hi, okay, cool. Well, thanks for having me. I'm sorry that uh, the circumstances couldn't allow me to be there in person. I was very excited to be there. Um, I guess I'll start off pretty simply and tell you about wh who I am. Um, I'm 36. I'm from California. I spent most of my life living there between San Jose and San Francisco. Um, I really became a, th a photographer in my 20s. Uh, it wasn't the first time I've been around photography or cameras in general, but it was the first time that things sort of started to resonate together. Um, I don't come from academia, so learning about photography was whatever. I could piece together from people that knew more than me in books. Uh, and then as the internet started to grow, uh, finding you know, spaces to uh, learn that way as well. Um, I shoot primarily 35 millimeter black and white film. Uh, I don't shoot color as much because I can't really print it and I don't really enjoy uh, the process of just uh, having things scanned for me. Um, I'm a member of Burn My Eye Collective. Uh, I'm also a member of Diffuse Collective. Uh, you can find us on Instagram as well as uh, this website here. I'm going to start off with pulling up some of the photographs uh, that I submitted to Burn My Eye when they invited me um, after me somewhat applying uh, more than once for a while. Um, but yeah, the internet's a little choppy down here, so hopefully things will load up faster. Um, I do enjoy street photography, but I don't consider myself a street photographer. Uh, I take pictures uh, everywhere I am, home, uh, outside, on the train, anywhere, anywhere. My camera's always with me. Um, and so these are some of the photographs that I use to illustrate that fact. Uh, most people that I know that consider themselves street photographers uh, really put themselves in a hole because they're unable to make photographs uh, in any other way because of uh, a label or some sort of like rigid set of rules that they're uh, imposing upon themselves. And for me, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be subjected to one style of photography. I just want to be a photographer. Um, but I definitely use the, uh, the tools that a street photographer uh, uses in, in order to kind of approach how I see the world and how I see everything else. Um, just my camera and myself and my wits and my observation. And I think that it will help you in any kind of photography outside of a studio setting. Um, I really enjoy making portraits. Uh, I, I enjoy putting them in between pieces of, uh, of work that I, I make that punctuate the little things that we see. Um, I believe that a portrait uh, juxtaposed with uh, landscapes or street settings or still lives uh, or pretty much anything can really create 
uh, a narrative and, and I think they make for a more impactful body of work. So a lot of these images are single images um, and they don't really speak to a certain story and that's not how I like to make my work anymore. Um, this website hasn't been updated by me in quite some time. Around uh, 2015, I decided that I was going to embark on a little trip and I went to Denmark. And I think that's where I kind of found my own uh, when it comes to making my, my photography stand out as my own. And I worked on a body of work that is entitled Ether. And there is a video on Vimeo that you can look up and you can see the making of it. And it was made by Jonas Norman, who's a, a good friend of mine who wanted to start off doing a artist portrait of me and it turned into something bigger because the work grew. Um, and I think this is pretty much the beginning of how my photography uh, started to evolve when it came to leaving just walking up and down the street making pictures of strangers and trying to find something a little more meaningful and deeper when it comes to connecting with strangers and also with myself and what my photographs started to say about my subjects um, were also uh, they also started to say more about me as well. Um, I think it was because of the direct involvement I had with uh, the people in them. But this was a pretty fun body of work to make. It was, uh, it was hard and it, it took a long time. And I spent the year uh, that I, uh, afterwards that I got home scanning the film, developing the film and printing and sequencing and putting it uh, together to make a zine or a small art book um, however you want to call it. And I ended up being invited to a gallery in Paris to show this. And um, I think that was pretty much where my work started to depart uh, from your standard street photography. So these are all pictures from Denmark, right? These are all pictures from Denmark. Mm -hmm. So from there, um, I guess my work kind of took on a bit of a different approach. And I started to slowly step away from color film. I slowly started to uh, not really carry a digital camera around as much. And, um, and I, I only shoot digital now when it's work or when I require a fast turnaround or if they if i if i require color um but other than that it's mostly just 35 millimeter film so this is the last body of work i kind of really made in san francisco over a period of time and you can see some repeats from my burn my eye uh submissions um but these are kind of a compendium of all the different types of uh you know photos i would make that i turned into however many zines i made in the past um, and so th this is once again is kind of a greatest hits, uh, so to speak. But I kind of noticed in making these images that I wasn't just drawn to street photography in general. I was drawn to just making photographs and, uh, and uh, obsessively, you know, I, I make photographs every single day. Um, and for me, uh, I was having an internal conflict about whether or not I wanted to do this for a living or how could I make this a living. And then I guess I started to ask myself, um, can I live without doing this uh, instead? And so basically my whole life is kind of um, my end result for my daily living for any job that I have for any work that I do is basically uh, to make these kinds of photographs, to make photographs, to make zines, to, um, keep this apartment gallery alive and to keep publishing people's um, work uh, and, uh, you know, kind of take off with that in the future and kind of create a bigger thing than what it is last month and then keep growing next month, next month, next month. And it's a, it's a rewarding process and I, I really do enjoy uh, showing and elevating other people's work and not just my own. So it kind of makes sense to want to, uh, pour money into a space to exhibit other people's work. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I guess I can wrap it up with 
not wrap it up, but I guess I can wrap my portfolio up with, with uh, these fire photos. So in, in California in 2000, what is it, 2018, 2017, um, 2017, there was a, uh, a really large fire, in Cal the largest fire in California's history. And so um, I happened to live across the bay from where it was happening. And I went there and, and I made these photographs of it. And my work had grown over the years to a point to where I wanted to start putting together all these tools in order to, uh, you know, make reportage images and not just, uh, you know, depend on, on uh, human beings in my work. So these are largely unpopulated photographs, um, but taken still like a street photographer. And I think that from here, this is kind of how my work is uh, taken and presented, so to speak. I don't believe you need a human being in your photograph to be a street photograph. And I don't need um, a city and I don't need a, 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 a giant public space. Uh, I think that street photography can be more of a, uh, a practice and as opposed to uh, a type of picture. Well, I'm going through these. If you have any questions, yeah, you can... it, it, this was done uh, directly after the the catastrophe, uh, the fire. Uh, well, not only was this done during the catastrophe or after, this was during during the catastrophe. During the catastrophe, okay. So, as you can see, there's still some of the fires being uh, put out. This was a lot of these photos were taken the morning after the fire department had first gotten there, um, and it ravaged this entire neighborhood. That just it leveled. Uh, uh, a neighborhood. It was called um, Coffee Park in um, in Northern California, and this whole neighborhood just got destroyed. Mm -hmm. And I think this might have been the last project that I mixed color and black and white with. And what we did is uh, a photographer named Jake Ricker and I we approached we were um, we approached a gallery in San Francisco called the Great Highway, and we asked them if there was a way that we could exhibit these photos and uh, have a, uh, a benefit for the victims of uh, mm -hmm. these fires. And it, it happened really fast. The fire happened over a course of two weeks. Um, it spanned multiple cities and multiple regions of Northern California. And a lot of people were displaced and a lot of people that were undocumented were also uh, really affected by it. We, we tried to raise money for people that were going to be affected the most in a marginal, uh, the most marginal. And so um, John Lindsay, the owner of the Great Highway, found a really good uh, uh, nonprofit to help people um, obtain advocates to help okay. us get their benefits. So we, we had this and we sold these photographs uh, with a, all of the proceeds going to the benefit. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, like the, the combination of, uh, of, of, of you know, unpeopled photos and people photos yeah. in my work had definitely started to dwindle when it came to this because there was nobody around. Um, but I'm really appreciative of the tool sets that I got from just you know walking every single day making pictures on my own, and it really did help. Are you also working uh, for for with the press uh, magazines or printed press or not specifically? Not specifically when I can. Um, for, for me, I don't have that rigid of a practice when it comes to making photojournalism um, to go out there and, uh, and, and constantly work. I would like to, but for me, uh, I guess the, the whole point of this was to, was to be there to, to document it and to use what I have as a, as a skill set in order to uh, help other people with this. So it wasn't just to get published or anything. It was more to to create a social awareness and then um, a social benefit cause. Okay. So. Yeah, powerful images. Thanks. And so, um, but th th I guess that's a little bit of, of an end for what I'm doing with my work for right now. Um, the collectives I'm part of, uh, Burn My Eye and Diffuse Collective, we all do a few things um, together that are our own. So with Burn My Eye, we like to make, um, video edits of our work and we collectively show them together 
And this is how we've decided to present it. Um, and with Diffuse Collective, we actually make uh, printed matter. We make zines. Um, and uh, Tour Dogs, Trey Derbis, he actually uh, uh, edits, sequences, and publishes those for us, which is really cool. Um, and, and, and it's a fun thing to do. Uh, but I'll show a Burn My Eye video and before I move on to whatever I'm Excuse talking me, about. the Burn My Eye Collective, is it based in, in New York or not? not uh, uh, we have all of our members, uh, they're on the right of the screen. All of our okay. members are from all over uh, Europe and North America, okay. Japan and uh, South America. So we definitely have a, a, a wide variety of people, photographic styles and, um, and types of photographers uh, in, but it, it originally started off as a street photography collective. Okay. Um, but I think it's kind of evolving a little more than that uh, nowadays. Um, but I guess I'll, uh, I'll press play here. And there's a little bit of volume on this. So okay. if you have your screen turned up, although you might want to turn it down. Mm. Well. So that's uh, a video we put together for the end of the year. Um, we submitted all of our best of photos and we're, we're generally a, we're a, we're a self-governing collective. So we don't actually have a lot of um, people that are like, you do this, you do this, you do that. Okay. We, we generally just come together and we each participate in ways that we both feel like uh, we want so if somebody doesn't want to participate it's not like a like a strike against them it's uh we have like a, a come and go as you please type of um participation when it comes okay. to our members um but yeah so it's, it's a little bit like our collective i mean street luxembourg yeah yeah i think i think all collectives the same generally, way. <laughs> yeah i think all collectives generally have a um a type of uh you, you know like a participation level that it, it will favor a few members more than others at times. And that's okay because we like to put our work together and not really put our names with our work because we believe that we, we want to show the, the images and not just uh, the photographer that might be more popular than others, uh, et cetera. Um, do, do you have any questions that you want to ask um, while I... Um, well, I see, maybe, why not? We, we have one question from Trey. Uh, uh, about what are you, who or what inspires you to shoot in this style? So maybe you can already give us some hints. So what is yeah, that would be that's actually that's a that's a good question. Trey's a I know Trey. Okay, Trey's, McDonald. Trey's a good photographer. Um, so okay, basically, uh, right now it's like, you know, we're all stuck at home. Uh, we're all being affected in some way or another about. Uh, making work, getting work, um, being, you, you know, whatever. So uh, a lot of the times with this style of photography, it isn't, it's not people's jobs. And so it often gets put on the back burner um, when it comes to uh, the basic uh, survival and other things that are a little more important than the genre of street photography uh, in these times. But for me, I've spent most of my life uh, as an adult 
you know, doing uh, this kind of work, making photographs. And it's, it's all I, it's all I know as a person and without trying, without sounding like so, you know, over the top about it, but I, I do make pictures every day. It, it is a part of my life. It's as, it's as regular as, as, as waking up uh, and then, and eating and then, you know, uh, exercising and getting dressed. It's, it's a part of my life. Mm -hmm. So there's the camera pretty much in every single room of my house. Uh, Cause like, I just kind of have them laying around. They're loaded with different films or whatever. Um, and so when I see something, I make a picture of it when I, you know, or, or I'll, my, my girlfriend will be doing an activity in the apartment and I'll, I'll go grab my camera and I'll take a picture of it. And the photographers that really inspired me to do things like that are, um, you know, like Ed Vander Elskin, who created narratives like Love on the Left Bank is a, is a, is a, is a, is a creation of him. It's not actually a, a, a documentary of, of, of uh, reality. And so, but his portraiture and the way he photographed these things, he was just prepared. His camera was always there with him. And when, and he, he told his subjects, you know, stay there, do this, do that. Um, and he, he took, uh, he took a loose control over the moments. Um, and not just with the camera, but with his, with his words. Um, a lot of the Japanese photographers, uh, photographed all, all their personal life, you know, um, uh, Iraqi, you know, even the, even the, even the book about his cat is, is, uh, is wonderful, you know? Um, okay. and so when it comes to this kind of work, the, those ones stand out a lot, um, because they didn't let the fact that they couldn't go out or, or whatever, uh, it wasn't a requirement. It was just, it was there, the camera's here. It doesn't matter if if this is the subject matter. I'm going to make these photographs, and they're going to look beautiful because uh, of the of their ability and not their their hindrance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have a special relation with your with your cameras? I mean, this kind of fetishist relation some people have. You know, they the camera must be this way or that way. Uh, uh, I you know. <laughs> That that's a really good question, and um, I guess the short answer is yes, and the long answer is not really, but kind of. Um, so, I I do have a very specific type of camera that I like using, um, or, or or specific types of cameras, and I don't particularly think that it's I'm fetishizing uh, cameras. Like I was a uh, I was really into Leicas when I first started making street photography. Um, and I think everyone that gets into street photography in some times or some way uh, starts to eyeball that camera. And for me, it was the M6. I made a lot of my work in Denmark on the M6. I made a lot of the firework on my M6. Um, and, and, you know, uh, that really is kind of one of the cameras for me. Mm -hmm. But also you could give me a $20 point and shoot camera and I'm still gonna make pictures with it. Because I, instead of focusing on what it lacks, I'm gonna focus on what it does. Mm -hmm. um, so I have an M2 now. Um, I sold my M6 uh, when times got a little slow work-wise. And so I have an M2 that I'm borrowing, but you know, some of the shutter speeds don't work. There's no covering on it anymore. And it's really a beat up camera. But if I, focus on the fact that I can't shoot at one one thousandth of a second um, then I'm really not going to be able to make any photographs but I'm going to just pretend it doesn't exist well then it doesn't exist right so yeah. now I I allow myself to make the pictures and not the camera anymore so I give myself permission to use whatever's there and 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 welcome its weakness and strengths okay uh, I see uh, I see a question from Frederick uh, are you shooting photos during this crisis, this COVID-19 uh, crisis? Am I what? Shooting photos uh, yes. during this crisis. I mean, documenting it or feeling it, uh, doing, uh, vibrating with, uh, with this moment. I, I, are you shooting photos? Yeah, I am. I'm going to pull up some. Um, so the last little bit of images that I have on, on this catalog that I'm going to show people is if you can see the full screen now, um, I always take pictures uh, at home. So it wasn't anything new for me, but now, you know, it's me and my girlfriend at home 
and we're we're alone all day long, and it's more and and I'm I'm really enjoying chronicling uh, our daily life together uh, more so than normal because it, every day is kind of uh, you have to really actively seek to uh, see something different or or to uh, approach it differently every day. So these are all photographs I took. Uh, this is a photograph I took pre-COVID. Um, but this is the last time we saw our family. So I'm also not only enjoying making the pictures, but I'm going through them and I'm scanning them and I'm in my dark room and I'm printing them. Um, but then, Joe, Joe I think we are, we are now, now seeing the, uh, a set of pieces pictures. Is that the ones uh, that you want to show us? Uh, no, let me, oh, you know, okay. let, let, me, let me screen share my Lightroom and that, that, that's why. Okay. <laughs> I'll screen share my Lightroom. There we go. I forgot I had to switch. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes, we see your Lightroom, yeah. Okay, so this is a photograph I made during the quarantine um, of some of the moments that we're having. Um, so like the pictures are there and they're always going to be there. It's just whether or not you're wanting to, to make them. So we, we, we go on a walk a couple times a week by ourselves. And so my work has, has gone away from photographing human beings because we're giving people distance. Um, to photographing the things I see on our walks okay. or if we're together or hanging out, uh, doing the dishes or making a portrait um, okay. while we're, you know, uh, together. But at the end of the day, this is actually one of the last photographs I made on one of the last rolls I shot as, I, as we were walking home from running our errands. So the street photographs will present themselves, but in the meantime, there are just so many other opportunities to yeah. to make a much more personal body of work in the meantime. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a moment when we are uh, in and out. I mean, uh, in our right. interiors, but out with our spirit or during our daily walk. Right, so I've, I've taken the time to not only um, photograph the familiar, but also to, to dive more into focusing on it. Um, and I believe that these portraits and then these, these candid observations are going to, they're going to mean a lot more to me, uh, in, in the future. Okay. <laughs> so I, you know, and so, so now is also a good time to, as a photographer, your, your, your role as a photographer doesn't stop at snapping the picture and it doesn't stop at developing the film and scanning the film. There's so many more, there's so many things left to do. And I think the hardest part of being a photographer is trying to make sense of what you're doing with your images. So okay. if you're going to make a book or you're going to make a zine or, or even just a portfolio for your website, that there, that is what actually takes the longest. And it's also the hardest to do because sometimes you're left with just so many images yeah. that you don't really know what to do with. And you end up having, multiple images of the certain subject or the certain scene and trying to to figure out which one is the best one for what you're doing is often the hardest and so this has been a really good opportunity for me to observe uh my images from last year from 2019 okay. and start to make a little more sense of them when it comes to my next body of work and what i'm doing um, I didn't want to rush to make another zine. I didn't want to rush to make another small book. So I think that the work that I do with this will kind of be a little more interesting because I'll have had more time to force myself to look at them and to really get rid of what isn't my best work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these are all things, these are all things I'm currently, uh, looking at when it comes to, uh, the next project. Okay, but the, the, the fact that you are shooting mostly in analog, it's already, it's already a, gr a great help in, uh, in, uh, in taking time to, to, to think about the pictures you, you, you want to make and you want to edit. Uh, isn't that okay. right? And the analog is a, slowing, a, slowing, uh, a slower process than the digital. There, there, there is, a, there is a, a truth to that, but also the misconception that film can be slow is also somewhat false for me because I can shoot, you know, uh, 300 film photos a day if I want, as long as I have the film and yeah. the money to continue doing that. Mm -hmm. So, but for me, 
I, the, the part about film photography and approaching this with film photography, that is why I choose it over digital, is the amount of effort that it takes to develop it, scan it, make a contact sheet, make a print, make a work print, make a test print, all these things. Um, the, it takes hours of your day and you can just lose entire days in the dark room. And so sometimes when you're looking at a contact sheet and what's, what's normally as easy as circling and saying, I'm gonna scan these 10 photos, those 10 photos, they don't look, some of them, they start to look a little different when it comes to, do I wanna spend one hour printing this one photo? Uh -huh. And it, it, I, think it, I think it makes, it will make me a stronger photographer eventually because cool. I'll be able to divorce myself from the, the images I'm on the fence with and I'll be able to focus and, and to uh, uh, more accurately see the ones that, that I'm consciously trying to create. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have, you have a dark room, of course, at your, in, your, in your place? Yeah, it's actually right here. I okay. Can, I can get up slightly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please show us. <laughs> I'll, show you, I'll show you the dark room, sure. So let me unplug some of these okay. things. And I let me if I unplug, I'm going to stop my screen share. Okay, because to have a, a bigger, larger image, good. So let's see. Did I? Can you see me? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, we see you. Yeah. So this is this is the apartment gallery. Okay. So okay. We have a a basic hangout here, which we kind of like keep a little messy when we don't have people over, <laughs> and we have these very big walls that okay. we these long walls that we uh we hang work on when we have we have shows here at sad songs in new york um during quarantine this is my girlfriend's uh art station and she's okay. painting a portrait of me right now wow and i'm really excited to see it finished she's a fantastic artist and she's Great. watching from, yeah she's watching from upstairs right now so okay <laughs> hello um, what's her name how what's her name her name's jillian Jillian, hello, Jillian. <laughs> so this is so this is my dark room. So it starts here, and I have a blackout curtain that I hang down, and when I turn off the lights down here, it's completely black because we only have one window way okay. in the back. Yeah. So then I have my enlargers, and I have my contact sheets, and I have I don't know. It's a little messy, but I've got pretty much everything I need here. Wow, great! For two, for two enlargers, it's a lot of space, and I got my drying racks down there, and then there's a a bathroom here that I have all of my uh, chemicals in underneath the sink. Okay. So I have I have pretty much all of the capability to make all these things in a in a. It's a big area, and I'm really lucky to have it. But uh, it's not the most ideal for a dark room. I would like uh, a sink that fits my prints and my film down here. And so the next place that we um, learn to inhabit, uh, I will try and uh, find that. Actually, and what I'll show you is my office where I'm sitting is actually okay. underneath some stairs. Oh yeah, wow. So, <laughs> So, you make the most of the space, huh? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, most of the space in a giant apartment is really easy to do. So I don't feel like, um, I don't feel like I'm, uh, I'm being put out when it comes to what I have. I'm actually very fortunate to have this place that I live in because a lot of people don't have nearly any of this space. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and, uh, it's, it's a, it's a pretty nice apartment. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, but I'm going to go of back. Magical, to kind of magical. We see the creation spaces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it looks a lot better when we have, um, when we have it all set up for a gallery. The last okay. show, the last show that we did here was Xerox prints. Um, and the whole wall, everything was covered in prints from the top to the bottom. Wow. And we got some, we had submissions from all over the world, and we had a couple really amazing photographers uh, donate some images. Like Ken Schles uh, sent us a photograph, and um, Boogie sent us a couple photographs, and so that was really nice to have some support from photographers who I, um, you know, idolize. Okay, good. <laughs> um, 
I see a message here. Uh, or do you want to continue? And we, we, no, we please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Frederick is following your, your Insta, Insta stream for a long time. Uh, seeing the photos on the screen, I guess you're an intense flash user. Could you explain us your approach with lighting? Uh, yeah, if it's not there, then you have to add it. So I don't, <laughs> I use a flash when a flash uh, is necessary. And I went through a phase where I used a flash when it wasn't. And I just feel like those photographs aren't very true to what I'm trying to show. So if the the flash is if the, if the flash is on in a in a photograph and you can see a flash it's usually because it was a point and shoot camera and it was telling me to throw it on um i do have uh you know camera systems that do require that do have uh you know flashes on them um but i don't i don't i i don't try and create that sort of uh look More with my work uh yeah. on purpose um and sometimes I feel like that can be a crutch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but if you need light, throw a flash on it, you know, that's put your blitz on and that's, that's all there is to it, you know? Okay. But I think with film, I think with film, I have approached a very uh, natural light uh, type of approach because I like the tones. I like to see them. But what uh, is the sensibility that you mostly use with your films? I, uh, it's always 400 speed film. 400? Okay. Yeah. Wow, great, great portrait. Is it, um, how do you, uh, to, the approach to the persons in, in wherever, in streets, in restaurants, wherever you're taking pictures, you, you get pretty close to people. The, right. Are they, are they aware of that? Uh, are you the kind of invisible photographer or are you the kind of intrusive photographer? What, what is your, 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 your approach? I think that if you have ever navigated a busy subway station or if you've ever navigated a busy street, if you learn how to incorporate your steps with making a picture, you generally tend to be less observed by others. But also, if you try and be invisible, I think that's when people notice you the most. So I just take pictures. And if somebody sees me take a picture, I smile or I nod and I keep walking. Um, if somebody asks me if I took their picture, generally, I'm just going to say yes. And I'll, I, I usually, I think it's funny. So I carry a film camera. And so if I take somebody's picture, and they say, oh, did you, uh, did you take my picture? I go, yeah, you want to see? And I show them the back of my film camera as a joke. And I think that tends to de-escalate maybe yeah. any sort of um, uh, feelings they have. Because it, uh, somebody taking a picture of you can make you feel self-conscious. And how we, uh, how we show that can also, um, it, it can be angry or it can at least seem angry. Uh, because it makes people feel unsure of why you did it. Mm -hmm. And we kind of live in a time where people are very wary of other people, which is sad, but that's how it is. So if you have a really good bedside manner with people you don't know and you can talk to strangers, I think you'll get away with a lot more than you think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, st uh, continuing with uh, the, the 400 ISO, the black and white, uh, I see a question. Where do I see from Lisa? Lisa, she asks if you have any kind of developer that you prefer. I mean, this is technical question. I mean, sure. Okay. So uh, we can get the technicals definitely out of the way. Um, so I use uh, HP five and I shoot it at 400. And if I'm developing um, prep with my preference of uh, chemicals, based on no budget, then it's usually Kodak D76. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. There's no, uh, there's no, no special, special cooking. No, it, you know, some people say, well, how do you shoot it? Well, I shoot it how the box tells me and I develop it how the box tells me and the results are this. 
And if it works, it works. And I, I, the rest of it is kind of, uh, it might be, uh, at least for me, it's a little, it's too much academic bullshit that I don't, uh, I, don't I don't have time for. Okay, um, yeah. You know, but experimenting is fun, don't get me wrong. But I've done my experiments and it led to what the box told me. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, because, yeah, you, you're focused on 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 the on what you see actually, not, not right. the way you 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 capture. Well, I mean the technical means where you put right. it. Yeah. I I think I think that if you give me two cameras and you put something in front of me, I'll take the same picture, um, but they'll look differently because of the camera. So the subject's always going to be the same. The moments are going to be the same. Um, so I just kind of try and uh, ah, okay. Uh, maybe you can put the the pictures on a full screen because um, then we can see them better. You know, not, not are these not full screen? Because they're full. Screen. They're full screen over here. So let me okay. let me see. Because we see actually the the platform, the Lightroom platform, where with the with the picture in the middle and all the okay. Hey. It's uh, yeah. Wow, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Great. There, there we can really see the, the, the picture itself, you know, with, right. uh, yeah, with, without anything interfering. Yeah, this yeah. is better. Yeah. yeah, great picture. Wow. Thank you. This one was with flash, the, the previous one, or, or not? Uh, yeah, there was a flash. It was getting dark. We turned okay. the flash on. Okay. So. We here in, in Europe, we, I've never been to New York, nor no to America, but we, it's being said that in New Yorkers are cooler uh, about the picture, their, their image than in Europe. Uh, is it okay? Yes. Is it correct? Uh, yes. So a lot of the times people here in New York are so busy that you don't really pay attention to what other people are doing. So if somebody gets directly in front of me and takes a flash picture, I'm obviously going to notice it. But people, people don't have time for other people's bullshit here. They got places to go. They're on their, on their thing. So if you can't get out of the way, then, then you know, that's when people start to not be okay. cool. Um, but yeah, I've never, I've never been uh, confronted to a point where it's been, uh, you know, scary. Okay. You know, um, or anything like that. And I feel like the people that that does happen to, uh, it, it's either just bad luck or they need to reevaluate how they're walking up to strangers. Okay. Wow. Yeah, powerful images, really. But yeah, these are all these are all images that I'm kind of you know I have a here I'll show you. This will be a good thing to talk about. Okay, Trey is saying goodbye. He's leaving. Bye, Trey. <laughs> and he thanks us. <laughs> so because you know him, so he's leaving. Bye, bye, Trey. <laughs> so all of the images you're seeing on my screen right now are all right here. Okay. Okay. So they're all printed out on on regular paper. Okay. And what I do is I sit at the table and I look at them. Okay. Yeah. This is and important. I start I start making piles of of the images and I start making uh, little sets and these are uh, these are outside these are personal these are portraits these are nobody has pictures of nobody's nobody's in a picture you know things like that and so uh all of these images are all in little piles on the table and that's how i create my work that's how i create that's okay. how i make sense that's how i make sense of everything so these are all images that i'm currently uh, putting on little pieces of paper, trying to see if they're mm -hmm. if they're good enough to me to want to move to another step in the process. So you're not relying uh, only on the, the the screening of the pictures. You I feel I feel have a physical uh, uh, way of touching them, seeing them. Right. I feel as a photographer, you're doing uh, you're not doing a, a favor to yourself by only looking at images on a screen. If you don't have little photographs printed out so you can like arrange them and, and to think about them and to always to feel them you know they, then they 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 just stay there you know and there's no way to to do anything with them further okay <laughs> wow 
So these are all, these are all one day you might see them in a book and one day you might not. Okay. Are you um, working with different lenses, uh, optical lenses, or do you have a preference for one above the other? It's always 35 millimeter. Okay. I go, I go uh, back and forth between so many things in my head. For years I did, it was 28, it was, it was 35, it was 50. Um, so even, even in my professional work, I have a 35 millimeter lens and then I have a long lens, either a 50 or an 85 for a tight portrait. Mm -hmm. um, but that's for work. So for, for being anywhere else, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a 35, 35 and every, and every now and then when I feel, uh, uh, like different, I put a 50 on, but that's, mm -hmm. that's it. And that rarely happens. Okay. So all of these images are taken with a 35 millimeter lens so far. I feel like it accurately describes what I'm telling my camera to record. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mary asks us whether you, um, she, she admires the way you work on the pictures. Uh, she, she's wondering whether you use only Lightroom or Photoshop or any kind of other software. I use Photo Mechanic and I use Lightroom and I use Photoshop, but I don't, I don't uh, really manipulate my images. Um, a lot of my images are full frame. Uh, there's not a lot of cropping. Crop if you want. I don't care. They're not my photos. But if I have to crop one of my pictures, I'm probably going to bin it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just me. And there's yeah. it's not it's not a rule. It doesn't make me better than anybody. Yeah. Um, the, fa it, the fact that you it's analog, so it's it's already. I mean, a lot is there. You don't have to right. manipulate. So yeah. It, it just it's one of the things that I have on a checklist of whether or not I keep something, and that's that. Um, but I, I usually scan and then I, uh, I adjust the levels if they're, if they need adjusting. And then I, uh, I have a little pen that I take all the dust out. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, but I, I like, I, I like the way it looks and I, I, I feel like it, if it's, uh, if it came out this way, then it should look that way. And now, now my pictures look like my pictures. They don't look like other people's pictures. And I think that's honestly like if I never, have another show if I never talk at another photo festival, whatever. Um, that's a, that's a really good goal, and if and and I'm proud of my images being my my images. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people spend a lot of time going, uh, going kind of crazy over what their look should be or yeah. things like I'm I saying. Look the filters, the filters, of course. Right, yeah. everything. I see an, a question here. Um, from Jezina. Actually, there are many questions, so I try to put, pick one and another. Uh, Jezina, Jezina asks, uh, how do you select photos from the many photos that are random shoot uh, to make a team or several teams of photos? So how do you make the, the, the selection? I think you hinted a little bit before, but maybe yeah. you can sum up, uh, sum up again. You know, you can start by putting things in categories where w these photos have this common subject. These photos have this common subject. And when you start doing that, then you can have your piles and then you start taking each individual pile and you start making that pile smaller until there's one, mm -hmm. you know, and then you go from there and then, then you can put all the different ones back together and to start making a puzzle out of it. Mm -hmm. Do you also ask for other people's uh, um, opinion? Oh, all the time. I think that if you're, if you're so confident with your work that you don't need other people's input, then you're, you're, you're missing out. Um, so to have people I trust that will actually thoughtfully look at my photographs and tell me this is good, this not so much, I like this one better than this one, and, and then they tell you why, I think it's very important to have you know, your one or two photographers that you really uh, respect and trust with, with your precious images, mm -hmm. because they'll take the care uh, for your feelings as well. Your, your pictures actually are, are an extension of your, your sensibility and personality. So that's right. why and that, so important that, that you have people that trust you, that you trust and that you have this relation because they know you. Right. Maybe. Yeah. And, 
and well, that's also why we take so many things to heart when we don't have the validation uh, from other people about the images that we like so much, you know. And if we can, if 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 we can do a little bit of work individually to distance ourselves from the from the unnecessary validation, uh, and then move towards the necessary validation, perhaps, mm -hmm. then I think that we'll see more people making more authentic, more personal work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a lot of pictures from the subway, it's Paul uh, asking us, or he, he, remarked, he noticed that a lot of pictures are from the subway. Is, is the subway a, a location that you prefer? Or I that think you that, like? <laughs> I think that living in New York, a subway is an inevitability for every single resident. Pretty much. Um, I live, my apartment, when I walk outside, I look up and there's the subway. Yeah. So I get on a subway to go into Manhattan and it is, it, it, it fills up a couple hours of my day mm -hmm. going from one place to another, uh, just as much as walking does. Um, and I think the reason why I have so many subway photos is because people don't really move. So I have all the opportunity to really sit there across from somebody and to take as many pictures as I can uh, in the, in, in, on my rides. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, yeah, so every single day I'm on a subway, so <laughs> more so than I am on yeah. a street in Midtown. And it's a special poetry about subway riding, no? People staying I think, there, waiting. I think, <laughs> yeah, well, I think that like the subway is the, um, is the one, the one truly common thing that we, we have together. Everybody takes the subway. It doesn't matter what station of life you're from. Everybody takes it. And it's, an, it's a necessity uh, for most people to work. It's a necessity for most people to uh, go grocery shopping. Um, so, and, 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 we're, and the subway is something that we're all stuck in together collectively as, as, uh, as New York residents. Um, so yeah, so basically there is a very special thing about it, about the New York subway. It's not the same in other places. <laughs> voilà, so many questions, Joe. <laughs> Fire away. Oh la la, yeah. Um, shall I uh, put, go on with the questions or do you want to-, to Sure, no, no, I, I, okay. I much prefer answering questions. Okay, good. And I think people are, uh, yeah, very, very interested in knowing a uh, few things. For example, here, uh, Nolan, Nolan, um, would like uh, to hear you talk about sad songs. What it is that's inspiring the gallery and where you see it going as a publication and space to share photographs. So the sad songs uh, project. Nolan, okay, so like, you to say a few words. Yeah, say a few words. So sad songs was originally a, a zine that I had um, compiled with a lot of photographers that I knew um, in person and not in person. So, uh, that when we just made a zine, um, but the, the 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 collective thought behind sad songs was to showcase people's work without without a name, and to mix other people's work to kind of tell a similar story from different perspectives. So when I moved to New York, I really was fascinated uh, with the concept of an apartment gallery where people invited strangers into their homes to view art, to share art, and to hang out with each other. Um, and I was immediately just enamored by, by the thought of having one of my own. And so it only felt like the right thing to do to name it after the publication that basically did the same thing, um, but, but only printed. So that's kind of like the ethos that we have is to share other people's work, uh, to seek out people that maybe aren't getting uh, gallery representation, the people that maybe don't like technically belong in a gallery, which is bullshit. You know, it, it really, it's really exclusive and it's not very, the people that, you know, it's not very warm or inviting. And I want people to like share in amazing moments here. Mm -hmm. So we have community building, and we also have uh, a shared space for others to come and share their uh, their, their their art with us. Mm -hmm. um, moving forward, I want to start publishing more zines. 
other people's works. We, do, we have a Patreon. So we have subscribers of people that give us money each month and they get rewards of certain things. Um, and we, we basically, we, we go from there, you know, it's like each month people get prints each month. People get, uh, they'll get a publication each month. People will get a, a, a print from one of the artists shown here. And once that starts to grow, we're going to start printing our own work here and really, and, and making everything here and not just uh, designing it. So that, that's where it's going to go in the future. I want to publish. Okay. Um, Tom is interested to know, uh, because you also have uh, commissioned works, professional works. Uh, right. Uh, what, what kind of, what is this works? What, uh, what gives you uh, the impulse to do these works? Is there a special condition or do you take it because actually you need the money? What's the reason? So I guess, okay, so there's a, there's an old joke. Um, how do you make $1 million as a photographer? <laughs> do you know how, do you know how to do that you die <laughs> you die and you hope that someone discovers your work <laughs> you start you start with five million dollars so photography so photography okay. is a, a losing a, i mean it's you know i spend more money than i make yeah. and so if somebody wants to hire me i'm pretty much going to take the job unless i fundamentally disagree with what they're doing what their company is or what, whatever whatever you know, it is that if it's, if it's something that I just can't get behind, I will not take the job. That really hasn't happened. Okay. Um, but I, I do like it when people approach me and hire me to photograph things for them based on how I see the world. Okay. Uh, yeah. My own lens. So those That's are the, the case with the, the wedding photographs that I see a few, uh, and uh, it's actually, it's your photos. Uh, right. You can find again your sensibility. Yeah. So basically, if somebody's going to hire me to photograph their wedding, their event, their campaign, their anything, how I see the world, then I, I, I really would, I really enjoy these things. Um, I might not be the best wedding photographer, but when people s see my work and they, and it resonates with them and they want their, their times, their days uh, captured by my eye, then I really get a, uh, I really enjoy these times mm -hmm. and I really enjoy the moments. And then I, wow. you know, I get to, yeah, I get to yeah. actually be a, a, a part of something that is uh, more than just myself and my own interests. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh they yeah. Be beautiful pictures. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, questions, okay, we have a little bit all questions that we have answered. Um, I had a question concerning, uh, you, 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 you said before that you, you, your, your, um, your companion is, uh, is painter. Um, yeah. We always dream or imagine New York as a, a nest of artists and creativity. Uh, what, how, how does it happen within the photographers? Uh, are you friends all photographers? Do you uh, or or do you mix up with other artists in order to have an influence? Uh, I don't know from filmmakers, uh, uh, painters, uh, musicians. Uh, is there a lot of uh, intercourse or 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 each one I think, in his group? <laughs> I think that I know in general a lot of creative people. Uh, the people that I end up seeing more often than not are generally photographers. So my friends are mostly photographers. Um, but I think that's just because you end up going to the same things. You end up going to the same events or they come to your shows or they buy your zines or you buy their zines. Um, so when you, when you find a, when you find a community, uh, that's so niche and so small as the New York city street photography scene, uh, you, you know, like you, 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 you have a lot of acquaintance, but then you're like, Oh, well, I really like this one person. So they'll be my friend. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> but you know, some, some people paint as well. Some people do other things as well. Um, I just like to be surrounded by generally creative, free thinking people. And, uh, you know, it, it tends to work out. Yeah. When did the passion for photography start? Was it when you were a child, a teenager later on? When did that start? So the passion for photography didn't start until my twenties. Um, I, I had, experience making pictures 
uh, younger than that, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't there for me. And it, I mean, it could have been anything and it wouldn't have been there for me at that time in my life, just because I didn't know what I was doing uh, or where I was going. Um, and so I think that when I, when I started to really, uh, become really passionate about photography was, I think it happens with everybody. You get one roll of film developed and you have that one picture and you see the picture and it feels different all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And everything is different from that moment because you saw something that you were capable of creating. Mm -hmm. And so when I got a, a roll of film back once and I saw a picture of somebody uh, that I had taken and I looked at it and I go, this is what I want to do. This is, I like this, I want to repeat this. So it was, it was that moment, that feeling, that uh, the aesthetic, the look of it, everything. And it, ever since then, it, was, it, it, it just kind of uh, developed a, a much deeper habit. Mm -hmm. I, so, um, or maybe I let you continue because maybe you still want to tell us a few things that uh, uh, we still have a few minutes. So, and then maybe one or two questions more. Well, it was just, that was it. And so, but, but from my experience from, from that moment was uh, wanting to be more of a photographer. So I wanted to, you know, take it more serious. And then I wanted to maybe get some work. And then I, and from the work, I, I kind of didn't want to be a working photographer and I wanted to have art shows and I wanted to show my photographs places. And so I set small goals for myself that were only for me. They were personal goals. Um, and I attained them because they were very small goals. I wanted to have some photos somewhere. So I put some photos in a coffee shop and this was 15 years ago, you know, um, but that was positive and I wanted to set another goal that would help. And so I went from there and eventually, uh, like I just have what I have now. Um, but I didn't put an unnecessary amount of pressure on myself mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I'm making pictures that a lot of people are making. I'm making pictures that uh, it, it, it is only by sheer luck that people are seeing mine and not somebody else's. <laughs> but I'm going to be appreciative of the fact that people are looking at my photographs on any scale, and I'm going to continue doing it and continue working and setting goals for myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you have your, your you have developed your, your way of writing, your your own language. So. Right. That's uh, wh why we, we follow that. Um, what I appreciate a, a lot in your pictures is the, the, impulsive, the impulsiveness, the intu intuitive uh, way of uh, taking pictures. You know, you don't really care about rules, technical composition rules and this kind of things. You just feel the light, you feel the moment, you feel the situation and that's it. It reminds me uh, uh, rather of, uh, you know, the Gary Vinogrand um, pictures, uh, also a New Yorker. Uh, yeah. Um, because he, he, he completely disregarded the, the classical academical rules. It just went, uh, you know, to, to, to his way of feeling things. So that's what I also uh, like and appreciate in your, in your pictures, you know. There is actually nothing fixed, uh, nothing standard. You just take us wherever. I think that the reason why the rules and other things kind of I, I don't concern myself with is because some people want to want to make photographs. Some people want to go and do these things. I feel like I have to do it. So it is more of a, an, uh, an impulse that I'm trying to figure out daily. So it's not that I, it's not that I want to do it as I have to do it. I'm compelled every single day to make pictures. Um, and even if they're just pictures of my coffee table, that I, I have to see what something looks like in a photograph. Okay. I have to point my camera at it. I have to allow my camera to describe again, what it Again, it's, it's what Gary Finnegan says, said, you know, you remember, he said, I'm photographing things just to, to know, to discover how they look like when they are photographed. Yeah, that's, he, that's he, said, he said it best. And he said it best and he said it for all of us. You know, the oh, rest yes. is just, we're, <laughs> the rest of us are just proto Winograns running around trying to figure out how the hell he did it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, we are slowly getting uh, out of time. Uh, maybe I see. Uh, let me check if there are more questions. Okay. Uh, 
So someone says they are beautiful. I mean the pictures. <laughs> someone loves uh, that ethos. I think the ethical way of, of your approach. Uh, it sounds very inclusive. Oh, okay. This was concerning uh, the presentation of sad songs project. You know, so yeah. it sounds very inclusive. Good. Uh, yes. Um, uh, da, 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 I think we've gone. Uh, we've got a little bit over your work, your way of seeing things, your way of uh, doing things. Um, it's actually so, such world, such universe, we, really, your pictures really deserve us to, to, to stay a little bit longer and look at them, you know? They, um, they are really catch us. Uh, so I, I uh, advise everybody to go again into your website because they see it there, joeagiriphotography.com and take yeah. your time, have a look at each photography and just let you let yourself be absorbed because really they, they've got this capacity of absorbing our 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 reflection, our 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 feelings. So thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> you said um you wanted us to, to say that you would be available right. for a few so, for, for the reviews. So so I feel I feel words. bad. I feel bad that I wasn't able to um, to show up and be at the photo festival because I was scheduled to do portfolio reviews. So if anybody had an interest in that, they can email me or they can contact me on whatever social platform that you want to connect with me on. And if you wanted to schedule something, you'd be more than interested in uh, working with people on that. Okay, so people, you, you, you've got an invitation here, okay? You'll get the email from Joey on his uh, website and you send him a request so you will arrange yourself with him for a, a portfolio review that's really a great invitation thank you joe thanks well, it, it, it's for us it's a pleasure to be with you uh, you know such a distance between us also time time difference but uh, it was really a, a special moment uh, to be with you and to, to feel your your pictures i feel grateful for you having me so thank you okay so people now um just a few words of conclusion. Joe, please stay a few minutes more with us if you want. Sure. Uh, after the official conference, we still will have a, 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 a how do you say, a virtual beer, yeah. <laughs> something like that. So, uh, people, I, I have a few words to, to say. So, uh, tomorrow will be the fourth uh, conference of our festival with Gilles Rigoulet, again, 7.30. So, please, if you... If you feel like it, if you have time, be present. Again, it will be something very special. Wow. <laughs> and um, also, we would like to thank, as a collective, uh, Street Photography Luxembourg, our sponsors. This is important. I forget about that. But this time, I won't forget it. Uh, it's Library Ernster. It's uh, Photo Mirgrin, Mirgrin. It's Hotel Pax. It's Ville de Luxembourg. All these are our sponsors already for last year and the previous years. This year was special. We didn't need actually any hotel for the accommodation, but Hotel Pax is, is really a, a good connection to our a good partner. So we want to mention them and they will continue with us for next year. So, uh, Joey, maybe sometime you, you come to Luxembourg. We would love to see you in Luxembourg and to walk the streets with you. Yeah. Uh, so these are our sponsors. So also to remember everybody, that we still have uh, this open wall uh, contest. So you are still invited. You can uh, post your pictures, your best street photos, whatever, uh, on our Instagram. And until tomorrow, 12 o'clock. And then there will be a small jury on the collective. They will select three, three winners. And these three winners, win, three winners sure. will be announced at 7 in the evening before Gilles Rigolet's conference. And each of the winners will receive a book, a photo book uh, from Ernst, Library Ernst. So this is, this is important to know, to say. Well, I think I forget nothing. Sorry again for my English. This time uh, I was a little bit shaky. <laughs> I, I was impressed by the, the American uh, uh, cool way of, of, of talking, you know. It's, um, okay, so I say you, uh, everybody, um, thank you. And hope to see you again tomorrow. And especially we will, we hope that very soon we get together really physically in a coffee and we can talk about photography and we can drink beers or coffees or lemonades or whatever 
this is really something I, I wish that will happen, I don't know, in a few weeks, in, in one month, in two months, and that will be a great time. So, yeah. Thank you, everybody. So it's, it's now over with our official conference. Bye. Have a nice evening. <laughs>